Good morning, church. It's Tuesday morning. Take your Bibles and let's go to John in chapter number 14. Uh, one of my most favorite uh, verses in Scripture is John chapter number 14. We get so much truth out of that. And I need you to know that from chapter number 13 on till we get into uh, chapter number 18 is all in the upper room. And these are teachings that we don't have anywhere else in Scripture. And so it's vital that we have the Gospel of John, and they're so great truths that we build a great deal of our doctrine around them. But in John chapter number 14, uh, we see that Jesus is talking to the disciples, and he says, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. So their, their hearts were troubled, and their hearts were troubled because Jesus had just said, One of you is going to betray me. And that means that Jesus is saying, finally, what I have been telling you is true. I'm going to be condemned. I'm going to die. One of you are going to betray me. They're going to beat me. They're going to crucify me, but I'll rise again. And so they're troubled by what's going on, that Jesus is about to leave them. He said, where I'm going, you can't go right now. And so they know there's going to be a time of separation and because they don't really believe or understand these things, they're in turmoil. But Jesus says this promise, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. So we get the sixth I am statement, and it is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm not going to be able to cover all that uh, right now, but just let me tell you that what Jesus is doing here, knowing that his disciples are bothered about the future and what's going to happen. He says, listen, guys, I'm going to go build a place for you. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I, I'd have told you. And Jesus is the greatest carpenter ever to live. He had learned the trade from his father, Joseph, his uh, earthly father. And he uh, is going to go prepare a place, a mansion, a dwelling place for his bride. And he says, when I get that place ready, I'll come get you. Now, Jesus' promise to those disciples was that he would come and get them in death. But it's a promise that we all are waiting upon the fulfillment of in fullness, and that is the rapture. Either Jesus comes to get you in the rapture, that will be the one time in all of history when God shows up, Jesus shows up, he appears in the heavens, and he calls his bride off this earth. And he says, come up here. And he would bring his bride to himself and go back to the Father's house. We call it the rapture of the church. Don't have time to develop all that. Other devotions, we've discussed that many times. But he'll either come in death, which is what he did for John and Peter and James and all the rest, or he comes in the rapture. But either way... Don't worry about it. When life ends, we'll be with Jesus. That's the wonderful truth of this passage. Now, there's also a little bit of a key here for those of you that love prophecy. What Jesus says to those disciples is what a man would say to a intended bride. If he's making a proposal, he would take a cup of wine and he would set it before her as an offering to say, if you will drink this, then I want you to be a part of my family. I want you to be my wife. There would be a bridal price that the family's, the, the husband, uh, the, the, the one who's to be the husband, his family, or he himself, and the bride's family will come to agreement what the payment is going to be for the bride, the dowry. And then once that is done, then he and she would drink from that cup, and then he would go out and prepare a place, and once the place is ready, he would come get her, receive her to himself, and then they would be, at that time, consummating the marriage, 
and they would be husband and wife completely. Now that's a great deal of uh, prophecy that we're not going to deal with right now. It's just that what Jesus is saying is, I love you as much as a man loves his bride. I'm not going to leave you. I will always be with you, but also I, know, I need you to know this. One day I'm coming to receive you, and the intimacy of our relationship will not be by faith, but it will be by sight. We will be together once again in my Father's house. What a great comfort. Why should our hearts ever be troubled? Because no matter what happens, we're going to get to see Jesus one of these days. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this sure promise in your word that Christ, who has gone to prepare us a place, will come and receive us unto himself, that where he is, we can be also. And we believe with all of our heart that he is the way into your presence. He is the life. He is the truth. We know these things to be uh, exactly what you have revealed them to be. And so we pray, Father, that you'll help us to declare the gospel to the world as Jesus being the only way of salvation. In his holy, precious name we pray. Amen.